here at Livonia First United Methodist Church. We are on Facebook Live today. So glad many of you could um, join in with us. We will give folks some time to join in online. Some people uh, are able to watch or desire to watch the service later in the afternoon. We do have um, a few people also on our conference call. I spent some time looking this uh, morning at statistics some data of our video live stream ministry and we are having a great viewership for our congregation um, online many of our services uh, have about 50 or 60 people on average participating online at some point um, and so I'm just grateful for that let me introduce myself again I am Reverend Dr. Hugh Hendrickson, and I am the pastor of, of the Livonia First United Methodist Church. And this is our online worship service for this Sunday, July 19th. You see my dog in the background. He has decided to um, uh, show up in worship today. Rev, do you have anything to say to the people? No, he does not. But I do want to um, share just a few announcements. I just want to share a few announcements with us today. Our church council will meet next Sunday, and that is Sunday, July 26, after the 11 a.m. worship service. And the council will meet in the fellowship hall. That is an open meeting, so everyone in the church who would like to attend is able to attend. I'll probably um, find a way to record that. I think we have good uh, internet coverage in the fellowship hall where we could possibly um, have that meeting on Zoom for people who, who want to participate but do so on the phone or from their home. And it'll be a, a regular style church council meeting where we will get updates from the committee chairs. I will share some updates as the pastor and we will probably, we will need to spend some time continuing to discuss our plans and strategies as we have this extended time of the COVID-19 pandemic. I am very grateful for the church council, the church council members, chair people, and, and leaders of different committees. They are a great source of wisdom and insight 
and have helped me make decisions uh, as, a, as a whole, as a collective body, regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Also, please um, be aware that we will, we are tentative planning again, to worship online and in person in our sanctuary next Sunday, July 26. Worship attendance is limited to 25 people per service. You can register online. This will this information will go out in an in an email um, Monday morning email. It will also be posted on our church website. It's also online um, on Facebook, and you can call the church office 706-356-8554, 706-356-8554, and Carol will add your name to to that attendance list. And that attendance list is just to help us with um, contact tracing if necessary. Because our policy is if anyone comes to our church for worship and we find out later that they had COVID and possibly um, exposed people to COVID in the sanctuary, in worship, we feel more obligation to um, to let people know about that and to encourage them to follow the the guidelines and the suggestions that will come from the health department. We'll be working with the health department and the, and the doctors to know what we need to do. And in many situations, if you do attend church, you're exposed to COVID, you're encouraged to shelter in place for 14 days and to get tested until you get a, a negative um, test. And, and I just want you to be aware of that because we wear masks, we clean, we sanitize, we practice social distancing, but there are still inherent risks right now of gathering in person for public worship. It is kind of confusing how I, I wore a mask to Walmart last night because I was craving some dark chocolate M&Ms. They were sold out. I found some other type of M&Ms. But I'm like, people are coming to Walmart, we're wearing masks. It's a very different situation uh, shopping at the store, at the grocery. In worship, we are in really a confined place where we're sitting there for about 45 minutes to an hour. We are socially distanced, but research has shown that the HVAC units recirculating that air um, do tend to um, spread the aerosols of, of COVID-19 in confined places. And looking back, many of the great outbreaks during this pandemic have been connected to church gatherings. And we're simply wanting to do no harm by protecting the health and safety of our most vulnerable. But we're being prudent and wise, working with the church council, listening to the suggestions and recommendations of government health agencies and such medical professionals, and working in our connection system with our Bishop Sue Hopper Johnson and our district superintendent. We're in a new district. We're in the Gainesville district. And our district superintendent is Reverend Dr. Alice Rogers. And I continue to ask for your prayers. They did not teach us about leading in a time of pandemic and seminary. And I'm trying, continue to try to be a good shepherd to, to maintain the health of our congregation, both spiritually and physically. I do know many of you want to be back in worship together. I want to be at worship together. I do not like preaching to a green computer light, but I also don't like performing um, funerals. I mean, that is a real risk because there, there could be um, significant um, health implications from um, COVID-19 exposure. But we're going to work together, pray, and be people of faith and not fear. And I do look forward to coming together for worship next week. And as a people of faith, one thing I encourage um, you all to, to do and to, to be part of is our Tuesday night prayer time. We had a great response Tuesday night at 7 p.m. for prayer. And so I encourage you to um, join us Tuesday night on Facebook Live for prayer. The conference call was um, available didn't have anybody call in, but we will have that prayer time again this Tuesday at 7 p.m. 
Speaking of prayer, let us uh, join together in prayer as we um, continue in worship. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Okay, friends, we um, have a wonderful hymn to begin our service today, Rock of Ages. Just want to give a bit of background of the image that I have on the video with, with the music. The image is of the outcropping, a rock structure at Burrington Cone, where August Topolady um, was inspired to write the hymn, Rock of Ages. Augustus Top Lady was in a storm, found shelter in this rock outcropping, and again wrote this beloved hymn, Rock of Ages. So you can sing as loud as you want, and I encourage you to do so. Lift up your voice in thanks as we sing Rock of Ages. Again, a word of thanks for the music ministry, the gifts of Louise Gass and Kent McCluskey Thompson. Grateful for their um, dedication to our church, taking the time to work together using technology to provide wonderful music for us each Sunday. And that is an expression. Our music ministry is a wonderful expression of our giving at work. People's spirits are truly uplifted by song. When we look at the Bible, the, the, the middle part of the Bible is the book of Psalms, and throughout the Bible there are hymns recorded in its pages. For we are a people who lift up in song our praise to God. How songs give us comfort in times of stress and, and um, fear, and how songs give words to our joy in times of great gladness. also want to again give thanks for your Faithfulness, your generosity enables us to have a strong virtual online presence to keep the church connected as the body of Christ. Even though we can't gather in person, we're still connected through technology, but most importantly, through the connecting power of the Holy Spirit. God's presence in me connects with God's presence in you. And even though we might not be physically together, we are spiritually together through the gift, the power, the presence, the indwelling 
of the Holy Spirit. Just a reminder of ways that you can give to our um, excuse me here. You're able to give by mailing your donation to P.O. Box 176. And we get checks almost every day, so thank you for that generosity. You can use your bank's online bill pay service. That might be helpful for you who use online bill pay to pay your utilities and other payments. You can also give through the Easy Tithe app. It is a secure web portal, an app also on your phone where you can give directly to our church using a bank card or a credit card. And you can bring your offering by the office Monday through Thursday during the office hours. And so again, just a reminder of those ways that you can give to our church. Really, how you can invest and partner in the ministry and mission of our church. And I just want to, again, say thank you for your continued faithfulness. Let, let me have an opportunity to pray for you all and your generosity. Lord, I thank you for the people of Livonia First United Methodist Church, those who are watching online, those who are listening on phone, those who will watch this video later. And I'm thankful, Lord, for many of them who invest through giving into this ministry, who, who are blessed and bless this ministry. And Lord, we pray that their gifts, their generosity can be multiplied and can be used to strengthen and expand our ministry of proclaiming the love and grace of God to all people. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we have a special song this morning. Louise, Gass, and Kit have come together to uh, share with us. Wonderful medley, wonderful um, hymn, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder.
if you, and I know you were, blessed by that anthem, please send a note, make a call to Jordan, excuse me, to Kit and Louise, um, working together, sharing their gifts to be a blessing to us today. Um, and so again, if you were, and I know many of you were, all of you, I know I was, I was thinking of that song, singing that song um, over this weekend, blessed, inspired by it. So send a note, a word of thanks and gratitude to Kit and to Louise. Also, Jordan, Louise's husband, is very helpful. He he combines the, the music together and sends that to me. So he also plays an important role in helping this service come together. I want to transition to a time of prayer this morning. And a reminder that you can share prayer concerns with our church office. Um... You can also call or text me. My number is 901-602-4425. You can also uh, leave a prayer request as a comment during our live stream. And a reminder again that on Tuesday evening, on Tuesday evening, we will have our uh, Facebook Live, um, excuse me here, on Tuesday evening, we'll have our Facebook Live prayer time, and that will be um, 7 p.m., and you can just go to our Facebook page, or I'll probably try to host a watch party on my page, and prayer requests that are shared there, we will include on our Wednesday email that goes out. But we um, are blessed to, by the power of prayer, knowing that we can lift our hearts to God and, and pray for God to work in, in the situations that we become aware of, that we're going through, and know that God is with us. God will help us, comfort us, guide and direct us. So let us bow our heads and our hearts as we go to God in prayer this morning. Almighty and gracious God, we, um, your children, thank you for this time to, to pray. Yes, you are the fountain of all wisdom. You know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. O God, have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. We gather today, O God, in prayer, praying for the people of this congregation, we lift up to you um, Mike and Linda Pulse's son, Mike Jr., who had a stroke which caused a wreck in Ohio. We pray for him and his family. We pray for Mary Sue Blair, who, who had a good uh, medical procedure last week and is happy and recovering well. We also pray for Al Johansson and Eleanor, as Al will have follow-up surgery this week. We pray for healing and um, wholeness from that procedure. Lord, we continue to pray for Sandy um, Morris, who, who continues to recover from um, the COVID-19 virus, and we pray for Terry, who is helping her recover. Lord, we are becoming more and more aware of people who have um, this virus and are, and are at various stages of sickness. Some no symptoms, some are in hospitals. And Lord, as I have looked at health data from our area, I pray for the surrounding counties. Um, we, we have great increases in some of our counties where new cases based on population are the same as Atlanta and Cobb County and Gwinnett and Decatur. And so we often think in rural areas that we, we kind of have a force field around us, but we too here even in northwest Georgia are um, impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray, Lord, for um, those who are, are, are working to, to bring medical treatment and cures and an end to this pandemic. We pray for business leaders and government and and institutions who are also working to keep our society 
safe and secure and moving forward in the midst of this pandemic. We pray as well, Lord, for those, again, who suffer and those who are in trouble. There are so many needs around our world, needs that go beyond just this pandemic that has been on the front page of the news for so many weeks and months now. But there continues to be political unrest and oppression in places like China and Hong Kong. We are aware of violence um, and hatred in in many communities around the world. We hear of wars and rumors of war. And Lord, we just pray for peace. Peace that comes not through weapons, but peace that comes from God and your presence, Lord. And we pray that you would bless the peacemakers. We pray for our military. We pray for those who, who are in service to protect liberty and freedom around the world. We pray for those in our local community, Lord, who who serve us as police, the various forms of law enforcement, first responders and firefighters and, and such. We pray for those who work in government who make sure the services of our community, services that make our community such a good place to live, continue to work well. And we pray, Lord, for those who are in leadership, at every level, from local city council all the way up to the world, to the nations, heads of state, that they would have divine wisdom, courage, and humility to rule with kindness and care and just and, to, and with justice. And Lord, we pray again for the world as peoples and as leaders. And we pray for those who continue to work to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And Lord, uh, we lift up this prayer through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, that same Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning we are continuing our sermon series, Genesis and the Not-So-New Normal. We have been looking at the book of Genesis. It tells us of the beginnings of, of so many things that we really take for granted in our world and in our culture. Over the past several weeks we've focused on the life of Abraham, how God called him out to an unknown place, a place that God would show him, how God gave him a blessing for of being the father of many nations when he himself had no children of his own. And we we saw how that promise was fulfilled in the birth of Isaac. And our focus shifted to Isaac and his marriage to Rebekah. And now we're spending time looking at Abraham's grandchildren, Jacob and Esau. In particular, we're looking at the life of Jacob. And now these stories, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, these stories, these origin stories, were helpful for the people who first received or heard the book of Genesis. And that would be Abraham's great-great-great-grandchildren, the the people of Israel who lived in Egypt, who who were forced into slavery, and for 400 years lived in slavery and bondage. In the book of Exodus, we read how Moses, another, again, descendant of Abraham, was empowered by God and was able to lead the people of Israel out of bondage into freedom. And these stories of Jacob and Esau, these, um, and Abraham and Isaac and such, these stories helped the, the Israelites 
Again, rediscover their roots. Learn who they were and, and why they were um, people of blessing and promise. In today's scripture, we will meet Jacob as he's on a journey to his mother, Rebecca's people, and Haran. Jacob was really living up to his name. The Hebrew meaning of Jacob means to supplant or to overreach. From his birth, Jacob was trying to supplant, overreach. You might even say trick his way to the top. Jacob was not happy being number two. At birth, Jacob grabbed the heel of his older brother Esau, his older twin brother Esau, trying to make sure Jacob be, could be the firstborn, not Esau. Last week, our scripture lesson recounted how Jacob bought Esau's birthright, that blessing that came to the firstborn. And it was a fair price, the price of a bowl of stew. A few years later, when their father Isaac was old and near death, Rebekah helped Jacob trick Isaac into giving him Esau's special blessing. Jacob went into the tent wearing Esau's clothes. He put on animal fur because Esau had hairy arms. Jacob didn't. And they fooled Isaac, Rebecca, Isaac's wife, and Jacob, whom Rebecca loved. Isaac loved or favored um, Esau. They were able to trick Isaac into giving Jacob Esau's blessing. Stealing the father's blessing was that last straw for Esau. He decided in his heart that after their father died, and the time, the customary time for grieving and mourning had passed, he would kill his trickster brother Jacob. Rebekah got word of this and sent Jacob to live with her family in Haran. Rebekah, again, who, who had favor on Jacob, did not want to see her beloved son murdered by his brother Esau. Before he leaves to go to his mother's people in Haran, Isaac says these, these words of blessing and farewell to Jacob. He says in Genesis chapter 8, Genesis chapter 28, verses 3 through 4, May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and numerous, that you may become a company of peoples. May he give you the blessing of Abraham, may he give to you the blessing of Abraham, to you and to your offspring with you, so that you may take possession of the land where you now live as an alien, land that God gave to Abraham. In our primary text today, we will read about Jacob's divine encounter between the God of Abraham and Isaac. How their God, the God of Abraham and Isaac, meets Jacob gives him a divine dream with a promise, and really um, starts the fulfillment of Isaac's words of blessing to his son, Jacob, as he leaves the family place to go live with his mother's people. So I want to read to you this day our primary scripture text from Genesis chapter 28, beginning with verse 10 through 19. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran, he came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, 
and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until you have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I imagine Jacob was tired, very tired. If you have been on a long journey, you know this kind of tired, the road-weary tired. When I would travel to Ohio, to Dayton, Ohio for school, I would usually be road-weary tired when I got to the hotel. And as soon as my head hit the pillow, I would be fast asleep. Jacob was so tired, he was able to fall asleep with his head on a rock pillow. Being able to sleep with your head on a rock pillow is tired. That is tired, tired, tired. While Jacob is sleeping, he has this divine encounter with God in his dream. God appears to him. He sees this ladder with angels ascending and descending, this up and down motion between earth and heaven. And God speaks to him. God appears to him in a dream much like God had appeared to his grandfather Abraham. And I believe in this dream, Isaac's last words of blessing, that Abraham's promise would fall on his son Jacob, begin to be fulfilled. The covenant of Abraham, the promise that God had given to Abraham so many years earlier, is being passed on to the next generation. And I want to share some important parts of this promise. First, God says to Jacob, The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. So in these words from God to Jacob, God promises Jacob land, which is so important in the time of Genesis to own land, to have a place that you can call your own. And God promises Jacob descendants, children, heirs, who will live and rule on this land. This is pretty important, for at this time Jacob is single. He has no wife, he has no children. So this promise also means that Jacob will marry and that his wife will have children. This is a good news. And then Jacob's descendants again will cover the face of the earth. North, south, east, west. They will cover the face of the earth so numerous, much like the promise made to his grandfather Abraham. And Jacob's descendants, these descendants of Abraham, they too will be a blessing to the world. And there's a promise for Jacob himself. God says to him, Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. So Jacob hears from God himself. God will protect and guide. God will journey with Jacob and will be with him. God will see to it that Jacob returns to this very place in safety. And so when Jacob awakes, he realizes that he had a divine encounter in the middle of his sleep. He is terrified. He, he is troubled. And he responds by recognizing that this is a holy place. So Jacob sets up a memorial. The stone that he uses as a pillow, he sets it up as a pillar, anointed with oil. So he sanctifies it. He, he, he makes it as a holy place. Jacob also changes the name of this place from Luz to Bethel, which means the house of God. Now, later on in the life of Jacob, he will return to this place. 
and he will have another divine encounter but that's a whole another sermon for another day but Jacob being Jacob Jacob doesn't fully believe the promise he had in this dream if we read on to Genesis chapter 28 verses 20 and 22 you might say Jacob even tried to grab God's heel. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I can come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And all that you give me I will surely give you one-tenth to you. So let's think about this. Jacob ponders this dream, this promise given by God, and he says, you know, if everything works out the way that you you said it will, which is really the way I, I want it to work out, with these things, clothing, riches, being able to return to the land in peace, if those things work out, if my plans, dreams, and schemes work out, then I will worship you, God. If God gives him a bunch of blessings, he will give God a generous tip, 10%, and keep the rest for himself. Jacob's response is interesting. And I spent some time this week pondering and thinking about Jacob's response to God's dream and to the promise in that dream. Jacob's um, response is interesting, for God has given a great promise to this man in this divine encounter. But Jacob won't believe it until it happens. Friends, this is not faith. Jacob's grandfather Abraham was a man of faith. Abraham is one of the great examples of faithful trust and obedience that we find in the Bible. And the New Testament Christians, they too admired Abraham's faith. And they wrote about it in Hebrews chapter 11. Reading from verse 8, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised as a foreign land living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect is, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Abraham believed in God and had faith in God, even though God had not yet quite fulfilled the promise. When God gives us a dream with a promise, we need to respond with belief. We need to trust God. We need to have faith. We really need to be more like Abraham and a lot less like Jacob. Abraham believed God without seeing. Jacob says he won't believe until he sees these promises fulfilled. But this is not the end of Jacob's story. There is, again, good news. It takes some time, but Jacob does become a man of faith. It takes about 20 years of living with his mother's people. And during this time, Jacob's character will be transformed. And again, that's future sermons for future Sundays. But in short, it will take Jacob's personal, self-centered dreams, schemes, and plans falling apart for him to stop trusting himself and his own strength and to place his full faith and trust in God. Jacob will be tricked by Laban. And being tricked himself will shake up his character. And when he returns to Bethel, 
some 20 plus years later, he will be a new man. When God gives you a dream, it doesn't mean that we necessarily have to surrender our own hopes and our plans. But if our dreams are self-centered, self-serving, and are out of line with God's way, well, the truth is we probably should really consider if we need a better and a bigger dream. As I wrote this sermon, I was reminded once again of, of these words that one of my favorite seminary, seminary professors, Dr. Jimmy Buskirk, told us in our evangelism class. Dr. Buskirk um, it continues to be a great man of God with great influence upon the church. And he would tell us seminary students and future preachers, he said, be sure to dream big dreams that only God can fulfill. Dream big dreams that require a miracle of God's grace for them to come into reality. Dr. Buskirk told us that God-sized, big God-sized dreams help us to have big God-sized faith. So I encourage you today to look at your dreams, your hopes, your plans for your life. Are they the kind of dreams that only God can fulfill? Do they lean in to God's great plan to bring heaven to earth? Or are they more self-centered and self-serving? If your dreams and your hopes or your plan aren't grounded in a love for God or for the things that God loves, well, I'm giving you a, a pastoral directive today. I want you to take a nap. I want you to, well, if you're really extreme, I guess you can go lay out on the ground and put a rock under your head, but I think a recliner or your couch or your bed will work just fine. But I want you to take a nap. But before you take that nap, I just want you to say a prayer to God, a prayer of faith, saying, God, I'm going to sleep. And as you encounter Jacob in his dreams, come into my mind, come into my heart. Reveal your plan, your purpose, your divine call upon my life. Help me see a glimpse of what you want to do in and through me. Yes, Ask God to help you dream God-sized dreams. And if they are God-sized dreams that you do have, keep believing in them. Keep trusting in God's best for you. Know that God continues and always loves you. And know that God's promise to Jacob is also God's promise to us as well. We, too, are inheritors of that promise. God is still with us. God is still leading us. And God still desires to bless each of us so we can be a blessing to this world. So, friends, I encourage you, keep on dreaming. Lord, I just thank you for this time to share your word. And I pray that you would give every person who is watching this video today or in times to come. Lord, maybe there's someone who's watching late at night because they can't sleep. I pray that that person can have a God-sized dream this evening. Lord, we pray that we can go forth from this place again, believing and trusting and having faith in you. Amen. Now, before we sing our closing hymn, I want to remind you of God's dream for all of us. And that dream is that God wants to set up a Bethel, a, a home, a house of God in our heart. Now, our hearts, they're not the ideal abode for God. Our hearts are dirty, broken, sinful. 
but through the forgiving grace of Jesus Christ, our hearts can be transformed, renewed, made clean. They can become a temple for God to dwell. And that is really an expression of faith, placing our faith in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so if God doesn't have a home in your heart, I would love to talk with you and pray with you and, and, and help you come to that place of saving faith so, so you can experience what so many uh, Christians know. Um, well, you can't be a Christian without knowing this, that God loves them and they are a beloved child of God that their sins are forgiven, their past it no longer controls their future. And they are free and empowered to dream God-sized dreams. And when God moves into our heart and sets up home, we too are promised a heavenly home with God. And so again, for those who, who have questions about that, please reach out. To me, let's talk, let's pray. And I love for this dream, God's dream for each of us, to live in our hearts, become reality in your life. Before we sing our closing hymn again, let's say our creed, our apostles. Christ is only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is Nearer My God to Thee. Again, um, I pray that you were blessed by this time together. We will be online and in person next Sunday. Um, please take heed of the emails that will be going out tomorrow. You can also look for some updates on our website. Also, um, just to let you know, I've been working on updating our website, and that will be released soon. It will be a little bit more user-friendly and have more information and on it available for our church and community and also reach out to me or the church office if you have questions and above all be blessed be safe be well be a blessing to others as you go forth in the love of god our father the grace of jesus christ and in the power and presence of the holy spirit to dream god-sized dreams this day and every day amen